Coronavirus deaths surging in the nation's epicenter as New York City officials revise their statistics to include deaths previously unaccounted for. The city adding over 3,700 probable deaths to their count, pushing the total past 10,000. Here with an update, we've got New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio joining us from City Hall in New York City. Mayor, good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. So you've, uh, you've added uh, probable deaths. These are people who uh, have had contact with people with COVID-19. They had symptoms, uh, but they never got a test per se uh, right. before they died, right? Yeah, Steve, it was important. Look, we, we got to say the whole truth as we know it. And these are people who the healthcare providers who are with them toward the end of their life, they thought it was COVID-19, but they weren't sure. And they, they mark that down as their assumption. And it's important to be honest about this. I mean, look, we, these families have been through hell. And, and the first thing to think about is the human reality of thousands more human beings we lost and families that are in pain. But then we also have to think about what it means for all of us and to really recognize the sheer ferocity yeah. of this disease and why we have to be very careful in how we handle it going forward. So we just wanted this larger truth to come out, even though it is not 100 percent confirmed. And we want I want to be really clear about mm -hmm. that. It is probable and it's important to say that. Indeed, um, the metrics yesterday were grim. Over 10,000 New York City residents have died since this pandemic started. However, on the good news, the stabilizations in the hospitals, um, you know, that that is the number. That's what everybody's been talking about. I know that the federal government uh, built thousands of extra hospital beds. They brought that uh, hospital ship in. You haven't needed them at maximum capacity, which is terrific. But the other problem has been, and we've We've seen you on this channel talking to me about how you needed uh, ventilators and, and things just in case. It's been hard to get stuff uh, like surgical gowns and uh, face shields and tests. So rather than wait for somebody else to make them, New York City companies have actually started. The, the cavalry is coming to the rescue to make this stuff at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. That's right, Steve. It's actually a very inspiring story, even amidst all these problems and all the pain. Here's something good. Uh, we got together, the city of New York got together with uh, companies, uh, research labs, universities, and we said, look, everyone, we've got to solve our own problem. We've been waiting for testing from the federal government. We've been trying to get it on the international market. We can't get it. Like you said, face shields, surgical gowns that protect our health care workers, our heroic health care workers. Right. They've been running out all the time. We just said, let's make our own. What's it going to take? Even though we don't make these things here, let's use American ingenuity. Let's use the kind of uh, creativity that New York City is known for. And guess what, Steve? People actually are doing it. Now they're mass producing these things. A lot of them, there's not a factory line that doesn't exist. So they're doing it by hand. They're creating. They're taking machinery, mm. retooling it. But this, this test thing is amazing. We didn't think even a few days ago you could create a whole test kit in New York City. But we brought enough brain power to the table. And in fact, by the beginning of May, we're going to be able to do 50,000 test kits a week for starters and hopefully a whole lot more after that. So this is part of what we have to learn from this crisis. Uh, we're not we're not waiting on anyone else. We're going to use what yeah. we have to protect our own people. Absolutely. Of course, protecting the people is is what the president wants to continue to do. But at the same time, he wants to reopen America for business, essentially. But we know it's not going to be like just flipping a light switch. You know, New York City, look at the numbers of, of people with COVID in the region. That's going to be one of the last places to open. So I know you think about this day and night. What's yes. it going to take for New York City to slowly get back to work? Steve, you're saying exactly right. We got to get back to work, but we've got to be smart about it because if we act the wrong way, if we jump too soon, then you could see a resurgence of this disease. That's something we should all be really mindful of. And we've seen that in some parts of Asia. They opened up a little too quickly and then bang, here's the disease coming back and growing again. We cannot allow that. So we get one chance to get it right. In this case, I'll call myself a conservative. I think we have to be smart about doing it in stages, making sure we can confirm that we're containing the disease more and more getting it back to where it was, uh, you know, a month or two ago before you really start to open up a lot. And look, I want to see people back to work as much as anyone. I feel it urgently. 
But we've got to secure the health and safety first of all New Yorkers and obviously all Americans. So do it smart, right. do it in stages. And then if we're going to get our economy up and running, uh, we've got to make sure that our cities can function, our states can function again, because I'm concerned about I need to make sure that I have a city that works, that, that police, firefighters, sanitation, yeah. all the things that we do all the time are working to have a vibrant economy. If we can't provide those basic services, we are not going to be able to restart our economy. And that's why it's so important that we get an, another stimulus action from the Congress that focuses on making uh, local governments and state governments whole so we can get us back where right. we were, provide those services, and actually have a normal economy again. Well, in the next phase, I'm sure Congress has got to deal with that because you make such a good point. Because you're thinking all the time, Mayor, about the next step and how do we get back to normal, what does New York City look like three months from now? So, Steve, that's exactly the right way to think about it, because what I've said, for example, is I do not want to see our schools reopen prematurely. I don't think it's safe for our kids, our parents, our families, our educators. That's the kind of thing where I say go especially slow and be smart. But by September, mm -hmm. so you're talking, you know, three, four months, uh, by September, then we are hopeful we could be back to something more like normal. But the way we get there is with that smart, cautious approach. If in September schools are open again and more and more people going back to work, even if we still have to keep a lot of social distancing in place or other measures, uh, then I could see us sustaining, because that's what I think we want to think about, getting it right the first time and then from the fall on actually resuming more and more being a normal country. What I would hate to see is, you know, jumping too soon in May or June the wrong way having that boomerang effect, the disease come back, then you're delaying, you know, potentially well into the year, anything like normalcy. Sure. And you say that and your previous answer was to get us to that stage for New York City, you need help from the federal government. You need the stimulus to make sure that the first responders, the infrastructure of the city that, that is supposed to operate every day is able to operate every day. They have been heroes. Look. Steve, the first responders of this city, police, fire, EMS, heroes throughout this crisis, healthcare workers, heroes, unbelievable what they've done to save lives. Yeah. But we are now going to be out between five and $10 billion in what's been lost in our economy, what's been lost in our revenue that keeps the city going. If we're going to have a functioning, strong economy, if we're going to be that economic engine that we are for our region and for our whole nation, we have to be able to have our first responders. We have to be able to have a functioning health care system. we got to have stability. Uh, there's no way we're going to be able to make up that money on our own. That's where the Congress has to step up and say, we got to get this country back to work. But to do it, yeah. our cities and states have to be able to function properly and support a strong economy and give people the services they need. If they act soon, if the Congress okay. acts, that's a pathway to a real recovery. Well, let's see what happens. Mayor Bill de Blasio, sir, I know you're really busy. Thank you very much for spending a little time with us today here on Thank Fox. you, Steve. Thanks so much for having me.